Welcome to The Needle Bug. My name is Karen. If you're new to my channel, thanks so much for stopping by to visit. I really appreciate your time. If you're returning, thanks again for coming back to, to visit and stitch with me a little bit. I really, really appreciate you guys and all the nice things that you have been saying. So thank you, and I'm glad you're here to spend some time with me. Today, since I get I have gotten a lot of questions in the Facebook group, which by the way is for the love of diagonal stitching. Uh, if you're not a member, please do think about joining if you especially if you're stitching on the diagonal. There's a lot of great people there and a lot of great people who are helping out others, answering questions, uh, asking questions showing how they do diagonal stitching. It's just turning out to be a real fun place. So give us a look-see and uh, think about joining because we'd, we'd love, love to have you. Um, actually, before I start, I'd like to say and give Brian of Blitz Stitch a big shout out and a great big thank you. Uh, for shouting me out on his last video. Um, I was so honored uh, for him to um, suggest people look at my videos as another way of stitching on the diagonal. And I know there are people out there who have a hard time understanding his concept of doing diagonal stitching, as well as I'm sure there are people out there that have a hard time understanding how I do it. So between the two of us, for sure, there are two different techniques to get the same result of stitching on the diagonal. So if you haven't checked out Blitz Stitch, please, please do go give him a look. And Brian, thank you ever, ever so much for the shout out. You just don't know how much I do appreciate that and thank you for it. So that being said, what I ta thought I'd talk a little bit about today and we do some stitching on is a lot of people have asked, well, how do I convert my piece to stitching on the diagonal? I've been stitching, say, either cross country or page by page or extreme cross country or whatever other method they have used and they wanna start giving diagonal stitching a try. And that's why I pulled this piece out. This is um, another Heaven and Earth design. It's called Window with a View. And I did start it a while ago. This one doesn't get as much love as Stitcher's Retreat does. But as you see, I do work on it occasionally um, when I need some brighter colors, some maybe happier colors. Stitcher's Retreat is a very dark, it's a beautiful, beautiful design, but the colors are very dark throughout the whole thing. So every now and again, I need something brighter to work on. And that's when I pull out a window with a view. So as you see, what I did was I was stitching page by page and I had most of this page done, except for right down in here where it needs to be filled in and as you see I did not continue the diagonal past the end of page one so what I want to do is convert it all to diagonal stitching and I want to convert it to being able to stitch from the very top the whole diagonal down to the left hand side so my eventually it will be going the whole length of the design. How I do that is I took my chart, and of course, I think most of you know I use Goodreader, and I took my chart, and I'm getting a little bit of a glare here from my light, so let's move that a little bit out of the way for now. And I drew my diagonal lines. So as you can see, most of them already on this page anyway, are all filled in until I get, whoops, until I get down to here. 
and that's where I'm going to have some more work to do filling in. So what I did is I moved to page two. I put my diagonal lines in and I've done the first two columns and now I'm working on this third one which will meet up about here on this page and as you can see it's probably no not probably it is going to now be able to continue down onto page 10. So when I finish this part, okay, I will then jump down here to page 10 and I'll continue with just this column. So from the black line up to the corner, all right? Then I'll go back. I have them bookmarked so it makes it easier jumping around. Um, I'll go back up here to page 9, no, to page, to this, to, yeah, to page 9, I'll do, mark my next column, which is at 130, okay, I'll stitch that, I'll go to this page and stitch the corresponding column, and when I get down here, to the bottom because you see I have nothing to fill in so once I've finished oops wrong way sorry about that once I finished all of this okay then I will jump down to here and I'll do the next column here so that eventually by working that way I will get to where all of this is filled in and my columns go from the top all the way to the left hand side and I'll continue going that way until I reach my right hand corner and well the rest is history we all know that so <laughs> that's the plan and that's basically how you convert and the essence of what you're doing is you're marking your columns and you're just filling in. If I didn't have any, all of this filled in here, I would just go and fill in the holes until I got down to the next page and then I complete my column, okay? So it's just mark your columns, work within your column, fill in any holes. I always jump back to the top and come down again. Some people will get to their left-hand side and then they'll work back up the column. For myself, the reason I don't do that is pretty simple. The reason I don't do that is because I prefer to always be coming up in an empty hole, which is, let's zoom you in here a little bit. Okay, pull you a little closer here, okay. So I like, stop it. as you see my park threads, to always be coming up in an empty hole and going down into the row above. So that that way I don't pull out any of these already stitched stitches, okay? If I were to work up the column, now to do this, I should also mention, I'm always parking in the lower left-hand corner of the square, okay? Lower left. So my stitch goes lower left to upper right to lower right to upper left, okay? That's how I stitch. If I were to be stitching from the bottom of my design up, every other column to do what I like to do, come up in an empty hole, go down in a dirty hole. I would then have to park in the upper right hand corner of my stitch and go down in the lower left, 
come up in the upper left, go down in the lower right. Okay, that would be working up the column. That would probably mess me up because I'm so used to parking in the lower left. So whenever I come to a thread, I know this thread is going to cover this space. So if now I switch on every other column and park it here, I might get mixed up. So I choose not to do that. I choose to always go to the top and work down. The other reason I do it that way is because I feel like my stitches are more consistent when I work top to bottom of the of the column. So, however you do that is certainly your choice. You don't have, you know, my way is not the only way. Remember what I said before. There are many different paths to get to the same result, end result. It's all in what works best for you and what you choose to do. What makes you happy. That's how you stitch it. Okay? So with that, we're going to do a little bit of stitching today. And with that, I have to tell you that I decided to try something a little bit new for me. Okay? In the past, when I came to my line or whatever line I was working on, if I had, say, a pound sign, I would just stitch all the pound signs and then park it in my next row or wherever it was used next. Um, then I would stitch all the dollar signs across and then park it below wherever it needed to be. I'm trying something different and I'm finding, even though it's a lot more threading needles, I'm finding I like it a little bit better. And I'm finding I like the way my stitching looks a little bit better. So what I'm doing is I'm stitching, okay, let me show you here, okay, this row has three stitches, then it changes color, then it has one, changes color, then it has four. So I'm going to stitch these three, oops, park my thread over here in this next one where it's used again stitch the dollar sign, park my thread down here in this dollar sign, stitch this double pointer to the left, stitch that, oops, come back here. And then I'm going to look, where is it used next? It's used right underneath it because I will be going back this way. So every other row, I'm going to the right, and then the opposite row, I'm going to the left. So when I park my thread, I'm going to look where is it used next in the next row. So instead of jumping back over, darn it, I bumped it again. <laughs> instead of jumping back over here to this end, I'm going to park it here underneath. All right, then I'm going to stitch the squares with an open circle. Stitch these squares with an open circle, and then I'm going to go, okay, it's not used anymore in this row. It's not used till it's down here underneath and park it there. So in essence, I'm taking each stitch individually as we go across and parking it in the next occurrence of that stitch. Okay, so it's just something, as, I, as you probably have figured out since I've experimented with so many different techniques along the way, as my stitchers retreat is certainly evidence of, because if you look at the back, you can see so many different 
types of stitching. So this is just another experiment to see how do I like this one. And uh, so far, I'm really liking it. And so far, I've avoided a lot of confusion. You know, is this going to work for everybody? Well, by all means, no, it's not. Because we're all different. Our brains all work a little bit differently. And what, as I said, what works for me may not work for you. So just try different things and see what you like. In fact, <laughs> when I was, I, if you remember, I went to a stitch, stitching gathering uh, the other Saturday over in Lancaster, which is rather close to me. And I met up with a gal who actually watches my videos here on YouTube. And uh, she sat with us and we were talking and she had a really good suggestion. Uh, and I, I think... I think it's something I'm going to consider doing because the back of my stitchers retreat is such a, how will I say, such a journal of all the, of my stitching journey uh, while doing that piece. Okay, what did I just do here? Oh, I, I think I picked up the wrong thread. Hold on a second. Oh, okay, I see what I did. I just need to do one of this. Oh, scared myself there for a minute. Okay, anyway, what I was saying was my Stitchers Retreat is such a record of, or journal of my stitching journey. She suggested, and I thought, oh wow, what a fantastic idea of when I get it framed or when I frame it, whichever the case may be, to frame it with the back open. So like not cover up the back so that people can see the story of the journey that I took to get to my method of stitching that I'm using today. And I thought that that really is a great great idea. So I really I'm really thinking about doing that and I really think that that I probably will because that back does tell a story all its own. You can see where I started, you can see that I stitched uh, cross country by page, you can see that I stitched in columns, uh, using various different techniques in the column, you know, where I stitch strictly by adhering to 10 stitches across and, you know, not feathering into other columns. You can tell where I feathered into other columns. So you can tell where I um, started stitching on the diagonal. You can tell that I changed the directions of my diagonals. So it, it really does tell a whole big story. Um, and now you can even see that, yes, I'm stitching on the diagonal, but I'm also stitching that diagonal a bit differently so that now I'm working each individual stitch 
as I go. And yeah, it means threading more needles. But as I said before, to me, the way I thread my needle, it really is not a big deal. And if any of you missed that, um, let me thread this one and show you once again. What I do is, okay, I lay it over my finger. I put the eye of the needle on top and then I just push it up and that little loop pops up, grab the loop, pull it through, voila, you're threaded. It just takes a second. So given that, I can still stitch rather quickly. You know, it's not that I'm spending two minutes um, threading my needle because it really doesn't take that long. Again, I just lay it on my finger, lay it over my finger, hold it tight, lay the eye on top, push it up, loop pops in, pull it through, voila. There we go. Back to stitching. It, I, it just takes a second. It's so quick. It's so easy. You know, give it a try. I will tell you, <laughs> don't get frustrated. It does take a little bit of practice to do it. Um, and if you have trouble getting that loop to come up, flip the eye of your needle to the other side. Because of the way the eyes and needles are punched, one side is a little bit wider than the other, and it will your thread will slide through a bit easier if you're trying to put it through that wider side. So just flip the eye. I mean that's a little a little trick um, to being able to thread a little bit easier and faster. You know there are other ways out there to quickly thread a needle. I I haven't used them. Um, I had a mentor that I was working with through the National, National Needlework Association years ago when I did have a shop at one time in my home. Um, and I did study with this woman for oh, about two and a half years on different counted thread techniques and cross stitch. Um, and she's the one that taught me how to thread a needle this way. She actually, we were actually working on Hardanger at the time. And it's the technique she used to thread pearl cotton. And that's where I learned it. And I just carried it through to threading my embroidery floss that way. And well, I've done this since the 1980s. So I would say over time, I probably got pretty good at it. And that's how I have threaded a needle ever since. Um, I think I mentioned it before, if you haven't checked out the For the Love of Diagonal Stitching, please do. I cannot believe we're up to over 350 members already. And so far, it's been a rather 
fun and enjoyable place. Uh, people have been very forthcoming with with sharing their knowledge, um, with helping other people to learn how to stitch on the diagonal. I encourage questions. Um, you can't learn if you don't ask. And seriously, there's no stupid questions. Absolutely no stupid questions. Well, I lie. There's one. The only stupid question is the one that you did not ask. Because that's stupid not to ask. So, you know, check us out. It's I've enjoyed um, I've enjoyed the group. I'm so very, very glad I started it. I've got a lot of positive response from people. And like I said, the people there, everyone has been very friendly, supportive, um, encouraging to everybody else. So, you know, if you, and we all do, if you need some encouragement to stitch these full coverage designs and stitch them on the diagonal, come give us a look-see because I'm sure, or I sure do hope that you also find it a place that is encouraging and can help you uh, get started down the road and down the path of diagonal stitching. Oops, I keep bumping. Sorry, I'm trying to loop a thread back on the card here and I don't mean to, to make you a little um, seasick with my bumping <laughs> but as I said it's a it's a fun place come and come and visit us um, if it's not a place for you that I mean that's okay but at least check it out and see you know is this something you want to participate in um, I'll give you a little uh, heads up and I will be posting it in the group probably later today if not it may be tomorrow um, I will be announcing the first challenge for the group and it will be a uh, journey to 10,000 stitches put this one wrong sorry about that I have to move it um, the challenge it will be a 10,000 stitch challenge. Uh, it will run for approximately two months. Um, and I have to, in fact, if any of you know of a software that's pretty user, user friendly, um, I, to make certificates please put that in the comments because um, what I'm going to do is award a certificate at certain milestones within that 10,000 stitches and um, then a completion certificate um, for everyone that completed the 10,000 stitches in that time. You know, and if people don't complete, that's okay. But at least go through and, and try and achieve the milestones along the way and get those certificates. So 
you know, in lieu of being able to uh, to offer any prizes, because um, heaven forbid, I I can't I can't uh, offer a prize like a free chart or anything of that sort um, to all the people that would complete a challenge. But to work towards certain certificates, I thought could be a fun thing that uh, everybody could participate in. Um, and of, you know, all it's going to do is mean time on my part to make the certificates for everybody, but, and to, um, monitor and keep a tally of where people are within the 10,000 stitches. I just parked this wrong again. Oh, luckily I'm only working with a few colors. This is what happens when I talk and stitch at the same time. But um, it's just going to mean some, some time on my part to, to make the certificates and award them to people at the appropriate milestones, but I think it could be a fun thing to do. So join the group, look for the challenge. I will be announcing it shortly, uh, probably later today. And if not later today, definitely by tomorrow. Um, just have to, I want to talk to Barb since she is the other administrator and see if what she thinks and if she has anything to add um, and then we'll we'll get it going. I'm looking so that I can give people time to to prepare um, I'm and I will be away the beginning of May so I'm looking for it to begin on the 15th of May. And that gives everybody a chance to to uh, get themselves ready, get whatever they need, um, and we can get the challenge going. Oh, I did it again. See what happens when I am talking and stitching at the same time. So. So that'll be the challenge, and uh, I look forward to uh, people participating in that. I think it can be fun. Um, it's not a race. It's a stitches your own, a stitch at your own pace. Um, and we'll see how it goes. If this one goes well, then I think we'll start thinking up some other challenges um, and take it from there. You know, I'd like it to, as I said, I like it to be a fun group and I want to encourage people to stitch and stitch on the diagonal and all of that good stuff. So um, as I'm yapping here <laughs> and people are watching, I hope you're getting the gist of um, how I started stitching. I really am, as I said, other than talking and not paying quite as close attention as I maybe should or normally do, I hope you're getting the gist of what I'm doing. I mean, I'm actually taking it one stitch at a time, one color at a time, and working my way across each row back on that one okay work my way across each row and as I said I kind of I'm finding I really do like this better and it really is going quite a bit faster for me I don't know why but you know what? 
I'll take it because <laughs> these designs are once in a lifetime designs and it's not something that you're gonna finish in a day or a week. It's something that's gonna be a long-term marathon. Okay, I am gonna jump down here. I am going to park it down here. Okay. Okay. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to try and flip this over and get it in the camera for you. Just so you can get an idea of ouch, what the back looks like. Okay. So let me take you down here. So see, I don't think it's causing my back to be any messier than it was over here when I was stitching by color by page. Here's the back of what I'm stitching now as I work each stitch individually across. Okay. So just that just gives you an idea of the back. Um, I'm really happy with it. It doesn't doesn't give me a big messy back. Um, and if it did, you know what? I would be quite okay with that too. Um, my bottom line is enjoy the stitching. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a pristine back, especially when you stitch these designs that just is not going to happen. You know, can we try and keep it as reasonably nice as possible? Sure we can. And that's what I'm finding this technique does. So we're looking at a little better than a half an hour here. So with that, there we go. I think I'm going to, um, say farewell. I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. As I said, if you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I really enjoy visiting with you all. And if you're returning, thanks so much for your continued support. You guys are fabulous. I'm glad you. a lot of you have joined the group and it's just been a pleasure. So I wish you all a great, great stitching week. And I will see you next time.